Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I'm speaking with Micah Winterhawk. She's just shared her newest single titled Replaced, and I am super excited to talk to her all about it. Micah, thank you so much for coming on today. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty great. Thank you for having me here today. You're very welcome. Where are you at the moment? I'm in Oklahoma City. Oh, cool. Well, I noticed your California Republic sweater. Yeah. <laughs> is where we are located. So. I got this at Ross like a couple of years ago. I really like it. Nice. I like it too because I mean I live here and it's great. So yeah, <laughs> should definitely cool. stop by sometime. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, obviously we brought you on so we could talk all about replaced. So let's just hop right into it. I want to start and talk about the lyrics. Um, obviously, there's a message that you're sending in the song, and I want to hear what it's all about and what the meaning behind it really is. Well, it talks about mainly my trauma, anxiety, and dark depression. There's also another word I would use, but I don't want this video to get to de de sorry, <laughs> demonetized. Sure. Uh, it really talks about my experiences with depersonalization disorder, which is not really heard a lot in the mu music industry, um, but it's something I dealt with a very long time with trauma with my family and with toxic people, and it put me in a very dark place a nice. lot. Do you feel that even writing the song has made you feel better in certain ways, like getting it off your chest? It definitely has. Mm -hmm. um, it still plays an impact of something that has been my past, but it's definitely improved a lot, even not just write, writing the music, but just as a person, really. Totally. Well, I mean, I love the song. Obviously, the message is great. And even putting the message aside for a second, the production on the track is fantastic. Um, and I think that's probably directly attributed to you because you do the production. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. So I'd love to hear all about that, how you got into it, how long you've been doing it for, and sort of like the behind the scenes on the song itself. Um, well, I've been doing production since I was 16. I wasn't the greatest when I was 16. And now... No one's the greatest when they're 16. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Oh, I know. But to me, it was like really horrible. Yeah. Um, and now I'm 19. So it's been about three years now. Um, I have, I'm not sure if you would call it disorder, but I have synesthesia. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah, you are. And, and that's the coolest thing. I'm so jealous. I um, wish I had that. Yeah. Um, it really helped me a lot to produce the sound and including the lyrics because I want to add in the mix with the trauma and the disorder and disorders that I had and along with my opinion and personal experiences um, in the past along with the production and whenever I put all that in I do see and feel colors from it, even from the arguments with my parents and the toxic people, gray, black, dark purple, royal blue, just those examples really. Yeah. And it really helped um, put the production and music together with the lyrics of what I really wanted to throw in. Because whenever I was working on it and work on a part, I would put my headphones on and I would close my eyes and listen. And if I feel those colors, that means I was doing great, in my opinion. And it just, it really helped me a lot, inspired me a lot to also really share this with other people too, who do suffer it as well. Because again, it's not really talked about a lot, and especially in the music industry. So totally. I just want to be one of the artists that talks about it. Well, there you go. I mean, you have to do something different to stand out. And I think that's definitely gonna, you know, pop you out from the pack, which is always a good right. thing. Oh, yeah, totally. Too many people making music these days. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I think it's pretty safe to say that you're obviously early on in your career making music, you've only got a few singles out to date. 
do you think that you found the sound that you're going to stick with for the rest of, you know, as long as you keep making music? Or would you like to keep experimenting and try new things? I think I found part of my sounds during the mm -hmm. journey, but I'm definitely going to experiment more and see what could really be more my sound or just, you know, who knows in the future. That's true. Here, here and there. No, I totally understand. Um, are you trying to model your sound off of like your inspirations or are you trying to do a little bit of both or try new things? I know it's tough just because there's so much music out there these days. Yeah, for sure. I think a little bit of both here and there. I do want to put out what I preach and like inspirations at the same time. Yeah. I do want to just experiment whatever while I'm still pretty new to the music industry. Totally, totally. Um, so who specifically inspired you to start making music? Obviously, this is a newer thing for you. So I want to know what was like the thing that pushed you over the edge to start doing something for yourself? Oh, uh, Billie Eilish. Yeah? I was about Billie Eilish. No, that's, um, hey, she's great. <laughs> she really is. She gave me a lot of inspiration, especially her early days when she started. Um, a lot of people used to complain about how my voice is really soft or just how I'm a quiet person. And whenever I heard her music, how she had a soft voice and talked about her experiences and what she deals with with her mental health, that's what really inspired me and said, you know, I don't have to be like this loud, obnoxious person and scream to the microphone or <laughs> I don't know. I agree. Um, no, I yeah. think that there's a real beauty in the subtlety of things. I think that so many people rely on cheap production gimmicks in order to like cause a rise out of people that they're doing everything that they can to distract from their vocals. You know what I mean? Like yeah. putting too much instrumentation or just too many loud sounds, but the softer it is, the more refined and the more it allows new listeners to focus on what you're actually doing. Yeah, for sure. I think it gives off like a really nice vibe than just basically what you said, just all of that. Totally. So what's your process of making music? How does it start for you? Um, what do you mean? Like, do you start with lyrics? Do you start with like a bass line that popped in your uh, head? Or does it kind of just come out of nowhere for you? Um... I think sometimes it just come out of nowhere. I can start with maybe a melody in my head or a tune that I imagined and I try to put into production or just maybe a catchy verse or a chorus, really just kind of out of the blue. No, that makes sense. That like makes my sense. room. Exactly. And I think <laughs> obviously going forward, you'll be inspired by other things and it'll start different ways. Uh, it kind of just depends on how you're feeling and what, you know, what is happening in your life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And obviously I want to keep the focus on the song because it's great, but I also want to look towards the future a little bit. You have a great sound. I love the, like, the atmosphere of music that you're making. Oh, thank you. You're, you're very welcome. Do you have anything else in the works or anything you want to talk about, I guess, that, uh, you know, new fans can look forward to in the future? Um... I'm not really too sure, to be honest. That's okay. Um, it's just a lot of pressure on me to kind of like figure out things so soon. And I, I think I just kind of let things go with the flow a little bit. No, I think that's great because honestly, there's too many people that force it. It's art. Ultimately, it's art. And if you're pushing it yeah. too much, then it's not going to be up to your standards of what you think should be out there. Yeah, because if yeah. you're just doing all this as someone else is doing it or a trend, it's not creating something that's you, you know. I agree. And so much of what I enjoyed about your music is that it doesn't really stick to one genre. There's so many different sounds going on. There's a lot of different moods that are present as well. If you sort of had to put a label on the type of music you're making, what would you call it? Like just one label? Yeah, I mean, obviously music is a little bit of everything, but you could call it like, you know, like a down-tempo R&B track or something along those lines. Um, 
Maybe like a pop R and B. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. Know, all I know for sure is I I mean my genres I made pop R and B trap. Um but again I'm still experimenting what maybe sort of is in my niche and genre. Totally. I don't think it really needs a name. I think ultimately, as long as people are listening and enjoying it, then that's really all that matters in the end. Yeah, that's what truly matters to me totally. as well. As you continue to release music, and I know obviously there's no timeline for the next thing, and that is okay, but is touring or even getting up on stage and performing these songs something that you'd like to do sometime in the future? Absolutely. Even if I don't get money for it, um, what matters to me is just putting myself out there and letting other yeah. know, others know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry so much. It's totally fine. It is totally <laughs> fine. Um, I just like to let others know that, hey, you know, you're not alone. You don't um, suffer through this alone. And really just build connections with people or fans, really just anyone. To me, it's not really about the money. It's just what I can inspire as a person. I totally agree. And I think that as people discover you and your music and they actually attach themselves to the message, then they'll continue to want more from you. You know what I mean? I think so much yeah. of the music industry these days is especially with solo artists, people attach themselves to personalities and stories. And then the music sometimes comes secondary. So once the people actually listen and make connections within your music, I think they'll find that there's a lot of similarities between them and you. Yeah, for sure. I, I see that so often, like on YouTube or Instagram, especially exactly. TikTok. Oh, of course. TikTok is where you see it all. You're like, oh, wow. I'm not the only person out there that thinks this way or is this way. It's kind of nice, <laughs> though. Right? Yeah. It makes the world feel a lot smaller than it actually is. Right. Totally. So <laughs> um, I know that you said Billie Eilish was a huge inspiration on you, and I completely understand that. But putting her outside of the equation for just a second, if you, had, right. to, if you had to pick someone to collaborate with on a, on a piece of music, who would it be? Um, it's gonna be another big artist, Ariana Grande. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. She's great love, and makes fantastic music. Oh, yeah, I love her music, her yeah. vocals. They're just like all the way up there. Yeah, she yeah. has great vocals. I agree, I agree. Um, and so, okay, so hypothetically speaking, I know you're on this new track of making music. What in a perfect world does the next year of your life look like in terms of just music and what you'd like to do uh, with this new journey? Um, probably we'll be going out there into shows, maybe not performing my music, but cover songs and getting out there and inspiring new people. Um, and maybe people like seeing me and hearing my music, seeing me yeah. sing. Um, also along with my album that I'm also working on. Um, I just can't really predict it too much. And I really apologize for not being able to predict everything. But like no I said- No need to I, apologize. I, I, yeah, I, some, things I, uh, some things I just have to like let it flow out and see for itself. But you know, still, have a plan of what I want to do and see how things would turn out, but not completely just like laying back and just see if it'll exactly. happen or not. Yeah. <laughs> I fully agree because there's no way that I, even I could predict what's going to happen in the next year. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so yeah. I think it's all about trying to be positive mm -hmm. about everything and just hoping for the best, but uh, also keeping a plan for yourself and try to, you know, push things in the right direction. It's really all you can do at this exactly. point. Yeah, especially with this COVID, it's really yeah. hard to do. It's so unpredictable. <laughs> Who, knows? Who knows anymore? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I do want to know, though, because we're a music blog. We're always trying to put people on to the good stuff. Is there any music that you've been listening to that you could recommend? Anything that you think should go on people's playlists? Um, 
Hmm, that's an interesting question. I mean, Billie Eilish, of course. <laughs> sure. As on their playlist. Um, maybe like the 1975. I'm a really big fan of theirs. Yeah. This is pretty low back. Um, I can't think of me too much right now. It's like dark over here. And no, it's totally okay. That's totally okay. My bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. All right, Micah, listen, I've got one more question for you at this point. Um, okay. And it's how I really, yeah, it's how I like to close things up with the artists that I get to talk to. I, I pretty much want to know uh, for the person that is going to discover you from this and for the person that's going to listen to your music for the first time, what is an opening message that you'd like to say to them? Um... Hi, I'm Micah Winterhawk, and I'm a sad person. Welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty relatable. Yeah, it's actually true, too, because I do get sad. But, you know, that's how I create my music as well. It's an it's unfortunate so circumstance. <laughs> yeah, but it's relatable, so you can't really complain. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> Well, Micah, I, I really, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, it really does mean a lot. Oh, thank you for letting me be here today. You're very welcome. And or tonight. For, of course. <laughs> and for everyone else out there that has not listened to Replace, I highly recommend it. We'll have the links below so you can check it out. Listen, stream it, follow along. It sounds like there's more on the way, and I will definitely uh, be paying close attention myself and hoping that there's more no oh, rush i know yeah. art takes time but uh yeah. just know the people want it more is definitely on the way i'm actually awesome. releasing another single emotionless in december very cool oh that is very close yep. so. <laughs> just if anyone cares <laughs> to know awesome all right micah <laughs> thank you so much again for your time i hope you have a great rest of your night we'll definitely be talking soon oh thank you so much and you too all right Take care. All right. Thank bye you. Bye bye. Bye bye.